Science is full of accidents that produced great inventions. Penicillin, Teflon, even cornflakes were all developed through happenstance. Something developed in the lab that wasn't planned. And out of it came a product we can't do without. And tonight, how a little luck and hard work have brought us a new discovery. It's a miracle substance called starlight. It resists flames, even the intense heat of a nuclear flash. No one knows how valuable it will be, but as John Scott reports, it has a most unlikely inventor and a secret formula that a lot of people would like to get their hands on. North Yorkshire, England. It's the kind of place where not much ever happens, where conversations center on the best pint and chips. But 61-year-old resident Morris Ward is about to change all that. Ward has discovered something that could revolutionize contemporary warfare, modern industry, commercial transportation, even the space program. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. I you listening? Yes, sir, you. Plastics. Morris Ward has invented a new, almost indestructible plastic. And just who is Ward? An award-winning chemist? A physicist? An aeronautical engineer? Not really. I um, spent um, quite an amount of time uh, doing hairdressing. A hairdresser? Who used to set my hair. He was a good hairdresser. He had a good reputation. I think he won a few competitions, didn't he? I'm not sure what we've got here, Charlie. But if we've got what I think we've got, we've got something. Like the absent-minded professor who invented Flubber, former hairdresser Morris Ward has found his miracle. Yes. He calls this revolutionary discovery Starlight, or My Plastic, and keeps it not in a safe or an armored car, but close by his side in a simple glass jar. Looks like cake flour or plastic. Yeah, that's right. His plastic, Starlight, can be rigid or rubbery. It can even be paste. But whatever the form, when Morris applies his invention to another surface and then applies heat to that surface, well, watch what happens. And you can see a plastic that refuses to burn, a discovery that any Nobel Prize winning scientist would envy. The world has spent billions of pounds for the last 45 years um, with thousands of the top physicists and Doctor Who's without any success. Um, I've come in, I believe, from a different angle. Under a butane torch at approximately 2200 degrees Fahrenheit, the plastic glows red, even bubbles a bit, but it refuses to ignite. I'll move the torch away, okay. like so. You can barely feel it. Mm -hmm. Whoa. You know what it does, but you don't necessarily know how it does what it does. I'm perfectly happy to uh, say that it is what it is and it does what it does. Morris isn't the only one puzzled by its behavior. Some of the top scientific minds in Britain and the U.S. haven't figured it out either. We don't still quite understand how it works. But that it works is undoubtedly the case. Sir Ronald Mason is the former chief scientific advisor for the British Ministry of Defense. I started this path with Morris being very, very skeptical of it. I became totally convinced of the reality of the claims. Today we've been getting progressively hotter. We're in America, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is interested in Morris's plastic. Program manager Rudy Naranjo is heading NASA's inquiries. Well, the reason it makes it so special, this material, is because it does so many things and it's just only just one material. Take, for example, those troublesome space shuttle tiles, the ones that keep falling off. Had Starlight been available when the shuttle was designed, it might have been a lighter and less expensive alternative to the tiles. NASA is now eyeing Morris's plastic for its new aerospace plane and for other uses on the shuttle. Any place where there's heat, it'll have applications. Any place where there's radiation, radiation coming right in, it would have applications. NASA's interest in Starlight was first sparked by an article in Jane's International Defense Review. It told how Starlight, in tests, withstood the most intense forms of energy, 
For example, lasers that would normally burn through half an inch of steel in a couple of seconds did little damage to the surface of starlight. And they went in sort of five, four, three, two, one, and nothing happened. It must have amazed even you. Well, it did, obviously. I was relieved. I mean, they were trying to shoot my bit of starlight down. I, mean, I didn't think it would do it. <laughs> but starlight's done even more than that. It has withstood simulated nuclear flashes in tests conducted by England's atomic weapons establishment and by NATO. We took on the fluents of 70 kilocalories, three can uh, vaporize a human being. Okay. It then took on the blast, which I've seen for an aircraft, and it came back unscathed. There are many potential military applications. Coat a tank or a bomber with Morris's plastic and protect it against the most frightening weapons of the future battlefield, lasers and maybe even nuclear bombs. Morris focuses on more practical ideas. Every day of the week you read about some family having been burnt through a house fire. And I feel that it's something whereby we should make it available to the average family to spray up the furniture, the carpets, the curtains, whatever, to prevent that sort of thing happening. Question is, how did a formula like this spring from the mind of a man who spent most of his adult life cutting and coloring the hair of the village ladies? Well, it seems Morris has always been somewhat of an experimenter. Oh, I remember him dyeing people's hair most peculiar colors. In the mid-70s, Morris decided to try a new experiment, and with his family, he opened a recycling business, first paper, and then plastics. It was the 1985 Manchester air disaster, in which 54 people died, that prompted Morris to begin his research into fireproof plastics. We realized that the people had actually been uh, killed with the smoke and the toxic fumes, rather than just the flames. I then started to look at what I felt would be a um, flame retardant. I believe it was around about Easter 86. I got my first significant um, piece of material, which, re which really was a forerunner of starlight. Morris took his fireproof plastic to a friend at a chemical company. The man said it looked good in tests, but Morris says his friend's boss didn't want to be bothered. His boss came on and swore at me told me to clear off. So I threw it in the cupboard for a few years. I couldn't afford at that stage to put any more money into it. It's no great surprise that the former hairdresser had trouble spreading the word about his discovery. He hadn't attended a university, had no scientific training. But Ward wouldn't give up. He figured even if the scientific world wouldn't believe what he'd done, the public would, if people could see how it worked on TV. Glowing red hot. But just watch this. If I turn the flame off and remember that it was producing 1,200 degrees Celsius, if I then crack it open, what's more, the egg hasn't even begun to start cooking. Soon everyone was knocking at his door. Well, a lot of people would love to have it. A lot of people are talking. Um, a few people have tried to pinch it. Oh, look who's here. It's the professor. Careful, boys. In trying to pinch or steal his plastic, the companies that want it have been quite resourceful. Morris caught one man putting a sample down his pants. That little chip that you're holding in your hands there, mm -hmm. what do you think that is, a billion dollar product? People have said about it being uh, multi-billion as, as, a, as a market value. I mean, you, you value it for me. The world's been searching for it. They've spent billions of pounds on it, you know, so what's it worth? So what is this? It's no wonder that Morris keeps his mixture of 21 ingredients a secret. He refuses to patent Starlight because he doesn't want to publish the formula, and he withstands even the most persistent inquisitions. All right, Morris, what's in it? Ooh, I suppose a bit of flour and baking powder. The actual composition of Starlight is known to Morris and one or two members of his family only. It's all, it's all up there. You won't, you won't write anything down on paper. Jane Ward is the third of Morris's four daughters and says she and the rest of the family often wish Morris would take the best offer and be done with it. We've all got a bit sick of 